This long elevator ride marks the beginning of Undertale's final act, New Home, and it faces quite a challenge. How do you take this absurd, fanciful game, turn it on its head, and tip out some genuine human emotion? The answer, surprisingly, is with an acoustic guitar. Undertale certainly has a reputation that precedes itself. As a love letter to JRPGs of the 80s and early 90s, it borrows from the era in its own game mechanics, story elements, and music inspiration. But it also works as a piece of satire, with every design choice made to subvert the genre's tropes. In particular, combat. Undertale suggests that maybe violence shouldn't be the default means of conflict resolution. You're encouraged to talk with your so-called enemies, peacefully diffusing situations by understanding the monster's motives and desires. And the game reinforces your decision by rewarding you with a humorous battle. The core idea behind Undertale's design and story is that of empathy, sharing in the emotions of others. Now, if I was being pedantic, I'd argue that the combat more evokes sympathy, understanding of others' emotions. But how Undertale really hits you with true empathy is through its music, specifically with that acoustic guitar. The track is called Undertale, and it's a worthy song to bear the game's title. Not only because it plays as the monsters of the underground tell us their side of the story, but it's also the complete realisation of the game's themes, both musically and narratively. First, the musical themes. You can't talk about Undertale's soundtrack without mentioning leitmotif. That's when a single tune is used repeatedly throughout a piece to represent a character or idea. Undertale's soundtrack is riddled with leitmotif. Out of 101 tracks, there are only 12 that don't have a trace of any other music used in the game. And most of these are either just short jingles or ambient tracks. There's a great write-up by Jason Yu detailing the game's use of leitmotif. It's definitely worth checking out. The song Undertale itself contains two different motifs. The first is called His Theme, and it's played by the acoustic guitar. Up until this point, His Theme has really only been hinted at, but it takes full form in Undertale, as this is when we learn about who he is. He's Azriel, the monster prince whose actions caused the events of the game, which in turn led to the king Asgore wanting you dead. It's not until repeated playthroughs does Asriel begin to play a larger role, so this theme is deeply rooted within the game's story. The other theme in Undertale can be heard in the piano line, and should be much more familiar to the player. This is the main theme of the game, and Jason Yu suggests that it elicits a sense of safety and comfort as it is used in places of shelter and rest, such as the hotel before the final area, and Toriel's home at the beginning of the game. The first time we hear this main theme is in the opening prologue, in the form of the track Once Upon a Time. This fairy tale beginning is an authentic 8-bit track, completely within the sound capabilities of the NES. And it's also highly reminiscent of the opening track to the original Mother game. (laughs) 
So while the prologue is busy establishing the narrative context of the game, the music is also already working to establish Undertale's context among games. This continues into the 16-bit era, with many tracks using instrument sounds straight out of Super Nintendo games, such as Earthbound and Final Fantasy VI. Even through the soundtrack alone, it's obvious that Undertale has a deep respect for these classic JRPGs, even if it does like to poke fun at them a little bit. Being unshackled to the limitations of these older consoles means Undertale can also use some modern, better sounding samples, such as the piano in Snowy, and the acoustic guitar in Home. But these are still very obviously digital instruments, and stay in line with the soundtrack's established tone. Maintaining a consistent tone is a great way to create immersion, so by keeping the music consistent, and to a certain extent serious, it allows Undertale to run a little wild without breaking the player's immersion. Arriving at New Home, then, is a series of breaking that tone and immersion in order to reveal the game's heart. Just seeing Toriel's house again is enough to remove the player from the moment and think back to the beginning of the game. And instead of the digital guitar sample in Home, there's now a real acoustic guitar being played by a real human being, Stephanie McIntyre in this case. This is the only live recording of an instrument on Undertale's entire soundtrack, and it takes the game's absurd, fanciful tone and brings it hurtling back down to earth. When all you've heard in the entire game is digital, an actual instrument stands out as something organic. The scene's humanity is emphasised by the subtleties possible in a human performance. The tiny imperfections in timing, the guitar being slightly out of tune, the sound of the pick on the strings. These human elements all help to create a personal atmosphere and ground the scene in the real world to bring out its emotional punch. New Home is the point that Undertale has been building towards. It's when you finally understand the monster's true motives and desires, and you begin to feel compassion for them. But it's far from a happy, harmonious moment, as you're about to meet the big baddie Asgore, who wants to use your human soul to break the spell trapping the monsters underground. When Toby Fox first wrote the music for this scene, it sounded quite different. This version feels sad and mournful, with a heavy bass and some really dark chords. Compare that to what was eventually used in-game, which to me feels almost hopeful, a positive mindset moving forward. Positivity in the song's major key, giving it a more optimistic tone, and forward momentum through its steady beat and heavy use of predominant chords. Check out on Gaku Concepts' video on hopes and dreams if you want to know the music theory behind that. But this scene at New Home isn't hopeful at all. It's the opposite. You're a dead man walking, about to meet your executioner. Surely the sad and mournful piece of music would be more appropriate for scoring the player's emotion. Well, that's true, but it's not the point of this scene. It's not about the player or the protagonist's emotions. It's about the monsters. They're excited and happy because they're about to be set free. They're hopeful in their king's promise that your arrival will finally mean the end of their suffering. The music is scoring the monster's emotion rather than your own. And this forces a change in your perspective, allowing you to feel how they do. And that's empathy. That's what Undertale is all about. Understanding and sharing in the feelings of others 
even if you're at odds with them. Toby Fox understands that music is a powerful way of conveying emotion. But instead of using it to draw out what the player should already be feeling, assuming the writing is doing its job, he uses it to make us feel how the other side does. A sense of safety and humanity and hope. It would be so easy for this moment to come across as cliched or contrived or saccharine, but it just doesn't thanks to the music. It totally hits home. Hey, thanks for watching. And thank you to these people who helped me in various ways. Their channels are all linked in the description below. And of course, a huge thanks to all my patrons. The following special people are the top tier supporters. Chris Chapman, Mike TK, Nanalu, David Sternberg, Gregar Wolf, Yedrick Walinski, Phantom MIG, Neil, Aliki Anna Kapatos, Biff Boff, and Kevin Ramph.